This is One on One. There she is, Darth Ann Kirk, Newark's First Lady of Jazz, Special Events and Community Relations Coordinator at Newark's Public Radio Station, WBGO Jazz 88.3 FM. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How does it feel to be Newark's First Lady of Jazz? I'm not sure. John <laughs> Schreiber calls me that. I think it's something I have to live up to the expectations. Yeah, and by the way, we are here one-on-one, -on -one, right here at NJPAC. Yes. But it's great having this place here. It's great having WBGO right next door. But tell us your story, because it's interesting how you got to this city. You weren't born and raised here. No. Come from Texas? Yes, Houston. Jazz big out there? At that time, when I lived there, it was. That was the music of the day, much like hip hop is now. That's what we did. But then you go to LA. Yes. Describe that. What's your connection there? Because it's, it's not just you goes out there. When I graduated high school, I went to LA to go to college. People from Texas tend to go to Los Angeles. And so that's what took me there. But your love for jazz, describe it. When did it happen? When did you know? I think I knew after I met Rasan Roland Kirk, because as I said before, growing up, that was the music of the day. Tell it's, folks who it's, it's Rasan oh, they described that. I don't want to assume. <laughs> Rasan Roland Kirk is now deceased. He was a multi instrumentalist. He played 45 of the reed instruments and and he played three horns at one time in harmony which he never was quite able to outlive the fact that it was a gimmick but if you ask any of the musicians it was not a gimmick he pulled you in you loved it yes after after meeting him and and traveling on the road and being around it all of the time, I learned to have more of an appreciation for it and I started knowing who played with whom and mm. how long, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just get involved. Some of it almost was like osmosis. It just rubbed off on you, just being around it. You think you were born to love jazz, to teach about jazz, to, to, to be an ambassador of jazz? You think you were born to do that? I think so, because most of the things that I've done in jazz, it wasn't like I went after it. It seems that all of this has just come to me. I guess you might say being in the right place at the right time, knowing the right people or whatever, because honestly, I didn't go after any of the things that I do. Well, describe the WBGO connection for those who don't know. WBGO, Jazz 88.3 FM, is the premier jazz station, I'm not just going to say in this region, in the New York, New Jersey metropolitan region, but some of us believe in the country. Uh, we've been partners with them for a long time. It's part of the public broadcasting operation, public radio system. <clears throat> You've been an institution there from day one, a founding uh, member, right? Yes. Talk about the jazz initiatives there and your involvement. Okay. WBGO was started, founded by a young man who once lived in Newark and went to Rutgers by the name of Bob Ottenhoff. Great man. Yes, absolutely. I'm still in touch with him today. He knew a friend of mine, Steve Robinson, who worked in public radio in Boston at the time. I'm going back to 1978 after Rasan died. Rasan died December 5th, 1977. Mm. Steve Robinson, who is a huge idea person, said to me, well, what are you going to do since Rasan's dead? I said, I don't know. And so then he told me about this friend of his that was starting this radio station. He thought he should hire me. I told Steve, I know nothing <laughs> about radio. And so he said, you, but you have knew about jazz. Other, I knew about jazz. <clears throat> and so he told Bob, Bob said, okay, the rest is history. And I might say at that time, they were both in their late 20s, right. like 
28, maybe 29. And so the rest is kind of history. That's how I came to work at WBGM. And the connection with uh, John Schreiber and Jay Pack. I met John Schreiber, as I said, at one of the brunches last year when he was a very young person and I was younger. I met John when he worked for George Wing for festival productions. We lost contact for a little while after he left George Wing, but then we have reconnected. And, and you're really excited about the possibilities for continuing to teach, to motivate people, particularly young people to be interested in jazz, right? Yes, Why? absolutely. Because jazz is America's art form and we need to build new audiences for, for the music for years to come and it has to be done some kind of way. I coordinate a program that introduces young people to jazz through WBGO. What's it called? It's called the WBGO Children's Jazz Concert Series. And that's our way of introducing young people to jazz, hopefully so they will be the audience of tomorrow. Because as you know, the audience for jazz is getting less and less and less. It is? Yes. Why do you think that is? A minute left. Why do you think that is? I think that's because of technology, because so many other forms of music are out there. It's just so much to entertain you. Uh, jazz mm. isn't in the schools that much. Uh, parents are younger and younger, so they aren't into jazz. So consequently, they can't teach their children about jazz. So someone has to do it. That's why we're glad you're doing it. That's why we're glad WBGO is doing it. And that's why we're glad you're partnering with our partners here at NJPAC. So you mind if I plug one more time? Darthon Kirk. Newark's First Lady of Jazz, where people can find uh, Jazz 88.3 FM on the dial and on the internet? Yes. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, folks, that is the place to go. We are uh, at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. This is one-on-one -on -one here at NJPAC. Uh, we are trying to promote art, culture, terrific people, music, and particularly jazz. The American art form, as Dorothy Ann talked about, we're not going to let it die. I want to no. thank you very much for joining us. You honor us one-on-one -on -one here at NJPAC. See you next time. Thank you, Darthan. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One at NJ Pack with Steve Adubato has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Verizon Communications, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Josh S. Weston, and by NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.